Hi guys, welcome to Space Reads. My name is Not Okay because I just read Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson, which I'll be reviewing today. So if you guys didn't know, one of my main goals for this year is to read basically all of Brandon Sanderson's main works. I also read this as part of the Cosmic Crab Along hosted by Books Before Death. I have all the information for that in the description below, including a Discord link for anyone who wants to read or reread the Cosmere anytime this year and even moving forward. Click all the links there. So Warbreaker, what is Warbreaker about? First thing that you need to know is that it is a standalone adult high fantasy. I believe Brandon Sanderson is planning to have a sequel, but I don't think it's happening anytime soon and the story of Warbreaker is pretty complete. So <laughs> how do I describe what Warbreaker is about? Okay, I guess as with Brandon Sanderson's main like adult high fantasy books, we could start with the POVs that we follow. So one of the POVs that we follow is of Ciri. She is a princess. She's the youngest in her family. Her father is the king of a kingdom called Idris or Idris. And her sister Vivenna, which is actually another one of the POVs that we follow, is betrothed to the king of a neighboring country called Halandrin. And Haladrin is pretty much a city of gods. The story pretty much starts out on the day that Vivenna is set to be sent to the neighboring country, Halandrin, to be married to the god king. But at the very last minute, instead of sending her, their father, the king of Idris, actually sends Ciri instead. And Ciri has absolutely no clue what's going on. She didn't receive the training that Vivenna did. She's not prepared. She's pretty much a free spirit. And so the story kind of starts up in a scary note where she is supposed to be married to this guy that she doesn't know. She has no idea what her role is supposed to be like. And a little bit later on, from Vivenna's perspective, we follow her journey in trying to kind of rescue her sister Ciri and kind of sort things out. Another one of our POVs is Vasher. He is kind of, it's pretty hard to describe Vasher. Okay, just imagine like an Aragorn type like character, like really rugged, really mysterious and dark. You're not sure if he's bad or good. In order to kind of explain Vasher, I'll have to explain a little bit about the magic system of Warbreaker. So pretty much each individual in this world has what we call a breath, which is basically the person's soul, like their life essence, and that is pretty much manifested in colors. And certain powerful people have multiple breaths, maybe hundreds, even thousands of breaths, and that allows them to have more power, to live longer. Vasher is one of those powerful people who has a lot of breaths. Another thing about breath is that certain people have the ability to awaken objects by giving a breath to say a rope or a piece of clothing. And you can command those objects to do certain things, for example, to kill someone or to fight someone or protect you. So that is kind of a loose explanation of the magic system of this world. I'm not gonna explain too much because that'll be kind of spoilery. All you kind of need to know is that Vasher is one of those powerful people who has a lot of breaths and can awaken stuff. The other POV that we follow is a god living in Halandrin. Like I said earlier, Halandrin is kind of a kingdom of gods. And this god's name is Light Song, and he is the god of bravery. Now, the thing about Light Song is that he was just a newly returned god, so the gods in this world are actually heroes in their past lives who have chosen to return to fulfill some purpose. I'm not gonna go what that purpose is because that would be spoilers, but Light Song is kind of a new god. He kind of doesn't really believe in his own religion. He has multiple priests that kind of guide him through his duties, but he's not convinced that that is his purpose. He doesn't see the point in any of it. So those are our four main POVs. Also, I forgot to mention, this is kind of important, not really, but kind of important, but something that might interest you is that Vasher actually has this sword who can talk. And not to get into spoilers, but the sword is really, really interesting, really mysterious, funny at times, but mainly like really mysterious and really kind of creepy even. So given those POVs, kind of the overarching story of Warbreaker is that there is an impending war, like a possible war that could happen between Halandrin and Idris. And all throughout the story, like each of our main characters try to either prepare for the war or stop the war. Okay, now on to my actual thoughts and review on this book. Oh my goodness. So this is my second Cosmere book. I read Elantris last month. I'll have the review linked no, over there. I know now where to point. And I think this is a much better introduction to Cosmere number one and also Brandon Sanderson, particularly for his adult high fantasy books. Again, this is only my second Cosmere book from Brandon Sanderson. So 
take that with a grain of salt. Here's exactly why. First of all, the pacing. Now, Elantris was kind of a slow burn book, but Warbreaker all throughout. Each chapter was just perfectly paced. There was not a single dull moment all throughout this book. Not a single dull chapter. Each of the chapters were really intentional and drove the plot forward. Even though I read this book pretty sporadically, like I was not consistent or I would like stop at like odd points in the story. Whenever I started reading again, I was hooked immediately into the story and all the feelings that I got from the previous chapters just kind of returned and I was fully excited and immersed in this story. There were maybe one or two info dumpy chapters towards the end, but I honestly didn't mind because at that point, I felt like it was pretty well deserved. Also, the reveals all throughout this book were perfectly placed. Like sort of the chapters in the second half of Warbreaker, some of them had me audibly gasping like, oh my goodness, like what? They had a lot of shock value and it was just amazing. The next reason that I love this book is the humor. I just didn't really have much humor, but this one, it was really funny. Like so many parts were funny, mainly in the first half of the book. Kind of like Elantris, Warbreaker is pretty dialogue heavy. And there's just like a lot of witty banter between characters, which I absolutely found funny and really, really cool. That the first half of the book, I was enjoying myself so much in the first half of the book that it kind of put me in like a false sense of security that did not prepare me for kind of how dark the second half of the book got. I'm loosely using the term half because I don't really want you to know where exactly the turning point is. Just know that the first part is kind of really funny and really cool and adventurous, while the second part is really just ah, the emotions. I felt so many things in the second part of the book. Just me, just me, just me. Characters. Every single character in this story was phenomenally, phenomenal, phenomenally, phenomenal, phenomenally written. Like, I loved all of them. Well, I loved all of them at some point, is a better way of putting it. Each of them were like really morally complex that some of them, I'm like, do I support you? Do I like you? Do, do I hate you? Should I be patient with you? I was just really confused a lot of times and just made them all the more realistic to me because they felt human. They weren't like caricatures of, you know, your stereotypical characters in a really basic novel. They were really morally complex. Even our heroes and our supposed villains were really complex that there were so many layers to their decision and kind of their, their thought process for each of their actions. They just really felt so real to me. Like, I'm kind of frustrated with the lack of fan art for this book. I looked some up and there were a few pictures that I saw on Google and just like on Instagram. There's not really a lot and it frustrates me because if I had the talent, I'd be drawing fan art of all of these characters for days. Like, I, I just love all of these characters, even the ones that I hate. One thing that I loved about Warbreaker that I also loved in Elantris was the themes that this book tackled. They're pretty different themes than Elantris tackled. Well, there was one similar theme and that is kind of the role of women in politics and, and just generally how society views women. I love the discussion on that in Warbreaker. I thought that it was really subtle, but it was also really powerful and really made me think. But the other one that I really loved about this book was the discussion on how we perceive people of different beliefs. And that goes not just for the religions that exist in this world, but also for the politics. I love that there's not like one belief system that's like utterly wrong and Brandon Sanderson kind of refuses to caricature or demonize any one like side. It was so well done. There were some parts where I was like, wow, I have some internal biases that I have to reevaluate or kind of get rid of altogether. I just absolutely loved the themes in this book. I'm not sure this is common knowledge, but Brandon Sanderson's writing is not too special, honestly. It's pretty plain and straightforward. It's not very flowery, which for an adult book, I think is a plus because it makes the story much more accessible and understandable. Okay, my one main hiccup in this book, which I think is kind of an unpopular opinion, a lot of people will disagree with me, is the ending. I thought it was really abrupt. Like the events leading up to the ending, I absolutely loved. I thought they were 
phenomenal. Like, they blew my mind. I was enjoying myself thoroughly. But as I neared the end, I was like, man, there's still a lot of things happening, but we're almost at the end. And when the end finally happened, I was like, really? Is that how is this is going to end? There are kind of a lot of unanswered questions. A lot of people say that this is a standalone, and technically, I think it can stand as a standalone. However, it just left me feeling like, man, I was waiting for something more, you know, like... There were a lot of awesome parts, like there were there was a climax, obviously, but as part of me, we're just waiting for something else, like a full on like resolution. I feel like if it was extended like three or four more chapters, or maybe just two even, I feel like I would have appreciated it more. But other than that, I really do not have any problems with this book. I thought this book was awesome, like it was phenomenal. It was gonna be a five, like a full on five star read for me, but mainly because of that ending. I gave it a 4.5 on Storygraph. Hi, Future Spencer here. Really quick, if you're interested in my spoilery thoughts and discussions on Warbreaker with other people, go check out our live show for Warbreaker for the Cosmere Crab Along. By the time that this video is up, that live show has already happened. I'll have it linked in the description as well as in the cards. I just didn't feel like making this a spoiler review. As a general rule, my reviews will be non-spoilery. And I felt that even talking vaguely about my feelings about certain events in Warbreaker would be kind of a spoiler. So just hop on over there if you want to talk about spoilers and yeah those are all of my thoughts on warbreaker if you have not already please join us in the cosmic crab along all the information is linked down below let me know in the comments if you've read warbreaker and what your thoughts are on it do you agree with me do you disagree with me if you haven't read warbreaker do you think you'll pick it up any questions you have leave them in the comments and i'll respond when i can if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please forget to subscribe so you can do it later and have a great day